Oh, hi there, Paul. Hi, Glenn. How are you? I'm great. Good. It's great to be back at the RVA stand and um, seeing the, the supercapacitor again. Um, I'm really keen to know what's new. Sure. Okay, well, since we spoke to you last, we've got a working model here with the integrated 300 amp circuit breaker. So how about I show you how it operates? Okay, let's check it out. So Glenn, yeah. um, when we spoke last time, we talked about making sure there was sufficient safety in the unit because of its high ability to discharge. So we took a lot of advice from system integrators and included a few features. So at the moment we've now got a motorised 300 amp circuit breaker in here. So we'll just turn the unit on here and it will boot up. So it boots up the electronics and at the moment it's off. So we can't turn it on manually. These terminals are off. If you have a look here on the multimeter, you can see that there's no power here available on here. Nothing, no volts. So now the unit's almost booted up fully. Here we go. I'll just open up here and the circuit breaker turns on. Wow. Again, 52 volts. Now the beauty of this circuit breaker is we can turn that off and on remotely. So if you want to commission a system or uh, maybe isolate one module, you might have say 20 of them in parallel and the module might send you a message saying there's an error or something's wrong, you could actually log in and turn the unit off. And because they're in parallel, you only lose a bit of capacity. So it's really good from a remote programming point of view. So we've got the Ethernet data coming through here. This is the manufacturer's live login to the, set, the module. And we can have a look at things like cell status here, how full each bank of cells is. So this data now we gather inside um, our other product called Emacs, which is a remote logging device. So that um, allows us to program a Celectronic SP Pro inverter anywhere in the world. It lets us gather data from the supercapacitors, all the cell voltages and graph everything all on one screen. So because we don't work for Celectronic, we're allowed to integrate lots of things into our software. So we've got supercapacitors, we've got IMARCs, charge controller now coming online that we can program through Emacs. So now we can actually have a turnkey system which is DC coupled or AC coupled, which all comes through on one user interface. So just to run through the key um, metrics of the unit, um, power, storage, what are the, what, anything changed since the last unit? Okay, so this module's still 3.55 kilowatt hours. And we've added some handles to the front and we've got terminals in the front as well which means the back's just blind you can push it into a cabinet um, the circuit breaker gives us a lot of safety um, and again at 46 volts in terms of integrating with uh, other equipment uh, is there any restrictions no because this is not required this is just for data so there's no bms or cms capacitor management system required to talk to any inverter so we could connect this to a victron solax SMA, any brand. Of okay, so here we are um, over at uh, the part of the Independence Day system, I imagine. Yes. Um, and you've got the Emacs here, this uh, That's little, right. little unit. So um, it's small but powerful. Yeah, it is. It's a single board PC. The, the hardware in it's not the valuable part, it's the software. Okay, so to set an Emacs up, all you need to do is grab the, US, the Emacs from the uh, packet that you've been sent, plug the USB cable into the USB socket on the bottom of the SP Pro. We give you a um, 12 volt cigarette lighter jack that you can fit into one of the bungs on the bottom here and it plugs into the 12 volt supply inside the SP Pro. Then we take the uh, power supply which is a little 5 volt adapter here which you can buy from anywhere that comes with it. Plug it in here. You've got 5 volts. The unit boots up. You've got a red light here to show it's working and a blue heartbeat light to show it's functioning. And then we take the ethernet from the customer's premises, internet provider, and we plug it in here and you're finished. You can go home. There's no configuration required on site. You don't have to go into the client's modem and get uh, port forwarding set up. You just plug it in and turn it on. Now I can go home and log into SP Link, drop down a tab and connect straight to this site just using my email and my password I've been given. Cool. So Paul, I actually just learned something then. Uh, every time I see you, I learn something that you've actually come up with a way of getting power out of the SP Pro. So you don't have to have a plug pack plugged into some power outlet somewhere. The whole thing's self-contained. You can do either. Yep. So if somebody wants to have a 240 volt version, they can use a power supply like this yep. and power it from that. Uh, if they want to go to the trouble of fitting the socket in here, that's a better way to do it, we think. It uses less power, it's more efficient. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at some of the images on the screen once we get home, uh, having sure. done this. And this is the end of the day, right? So yes. we're tired, we've done a lot of work, and yep. then we just plug it in and leave the site and do all the configuration. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's have a look at that. Okay. Okay, so this is SP-Link as we know, but this is a slightly updated version where we've integrated RVO's Emacs code inside SP Link. It tells you what to do here. It says step one, choose file up here and connect to Emacs. Step two is connect to RBO Emacs. So let me set it up for you. 
Okay, this is how you connect to an Emacs using SP Link. File, connect to Emacs, put your email and password in. It'll list all the Emacs around the world that are connected to your email address. Double click the one you want, and it creates a connection through the internet to the site. Once it's made the connection, it will also um, download the file, which is the uh, configuration file. So I'm on, there we go, quick view. So I'm live onto a site which is in Ringwood and I'm in Donvale. I can make all my changes here. When I'm finished, I press configure. It's that simple.